this whole thing, so I appreciate her taking the time. Hi, Judy. How are you? Hi. How are you? I, I know you would only do this for me. Yes. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. This is true. Uh, I, I like hearing that, so I said it myself. <laughs> uh, all right. No laughing matter, of course. Um, you know, we're getting uh, we're getting conflicting reports, uh, but uh, what's your take on on what we know so far, where the investigation stands, and you know, a, a, a lot of this, including the, the type of bomb used, although anybody could have made it, certainly is reminiscent of the kind of bombs used by um, Islamic Jihad, the Hezbollah, and, uh, and even the Taliban, according to one CNN security expert who was just back from Afghanistan. Look, the, uh, uh, the, we're just at the beginning stages of this investigation, and it's true that there's nothing particularly high-tech, apparently, about this bomb, at least at this stage. Um, yes, uh, you're going to... Uh, we've seen these uh, types of attacks throughout the Middle East. We've seen them in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, I think one of the big questions is why we haven't seen them here uh, until now. Um, but I, what I'd like you to do is avoid jumping to conclusions. I think we should all be wary of this, uh, say, because it's a kind of bomb that these other groups have used in the past, that it's one of those groups that carried out this attack in Boston. We don't know that yet. No, absolutely, which is why I, I did preface right. it by saying anybody could, could make that. That's uh, the point. Yeah, <laughs> anybody could make it. Uh, um, and now there have been reports uh, today that um, that uh, the uh, Saudi national, 20-year-old who ran, who was uh, being questioned, at least in the hospital, um, is no, no not a person of interest, uh, no longer, if he ever was. Yet, of course, the FBI uh, got a warrant, raided the house, took out uh, bundles of stuff. Uh, and according to Steve Emerson, this man had a Facebook page or has a Facebook page with uh, plenty of postings, plenty of anti-American postings on it. And Steve Emerson, who actually broke the story that the man was no longer a person of interest, says that other people who have posted on this page are now a people of interest. You know anything about any of that? Uh, no, I don't, because I've been looking at um, the response to this. Uh, I've been focused on uh, how you can send a signal to terrorists that such activity doesn't pay. Um, I know right now people are focused on the kind of bomb that it is and who might have carried it out, but I think in the longer run, I'm interested in how you deter or you thwart such attacks, and that's what I've been thinking about today. And how, how might that occur? Well, I think that uh, one of the most important elements of uh, deterrence is what I call kind of national resilience. I began to see this um, not only in Israel when they were subjected repeatedly to terrorist attacks, but also in um, Ireland and in England when the IRA uh, was uh, responsible for a series of very deadly bombings in pubs and in London stores. If a nation does not respond, if people become just more determined to kind of carry on with their daily lives, if the first responders know what to do and how to do it and perform their tasks efficiently, and if you minimize the amount of death and injury and destruction, it tends to, uh, to discourage terrorists. And it makes people think that going to all of this trouble to strike out um, is not really worth the the effort. Um, now, th this, by the way, doesn't work with you know truly committed people like uh, you know like the hardcore Al Qaeda, and it doesn't work with people who are clearly crazy, <laughs> you know, nut whack jobs. But um, if you look at the uh, the impact, for example, of uh, of the Oklahoma City bombing and the extent to which Americans, uh, number one, the people who perpetrated that act quickly understood that they had done their cause a great deal of harm because of the solidarity and resilience of the American people. You tend to um, just to make it, you know, carrying out these kinds of attacks not worth the price that people have to pay to do it. I'm I'm very interested in in response because I think effective response deters attacks. I know that's um, not fashionable in some homeland security and national security circles these days, but my own experience on the ground tells me that it 
that it's very important. So I've been looking at how Boston responded to the attack. Well, of course, uh, that is uh, very important, and we've heard so much, just uh, like uh, in New York, uh, we're just talking about with Governor Pataki how this is reminiscent of how people ran to the scene, ran into the burning buildings, and, and here you have the doctors here. You had people who uh, were, were dehydrated from the race tear out their intravenous needles and, and, and give it to people who were hurt in the bombing. I mean, all kinds of heroic scenes and all kinds of heroic gestures. But, you know, but when push comes to shove, not to diminish your angle at all, uh, and, and I can't wait to see your piece uh, when it's written, uh, but the fact of the matter is uh, you talk about crazies and dedicated al-Qaeda – Anybody who would go to this length um, is either crazy slash and or dedicated enough, um, and all they care about is making their statement and killing if it's Americans or people, if it's, uh, you know, whatever their goal is. I don't think they, I mean, I don't think the terrorists care. I don't think al-Qaeda is ever going to say, oh, look, you know, it, it doesn't seem to bother them or, or look how they, how they unite around this. Or I don't think any terrorist is ever going to, uh, to do that because they, they hate the people. They hate us so much that they're willing to kill children. Um, I think that uh, the impact it has on us is very much in their minds, Steve. And I'm, I'm sorry, I have to disagree with no, you. No, that's fine. I've interviewed a lot of these people. I've talked to them in prisons. I've talked to women suicide bombers who have failed in their tasks and have lived to tell the story. I have interviewed Uyghurs from China who uh, want our Islamic fanatics, who want a, an Islamic China. I've talked to al-Qaeda people. I think it does matter to them that their efforts are effective. And one of the goals of Osama bin Laden clearly stated, repeatedly stated, was that he would bring the United States to its knees. It would force us out of the Middle East. Well, he seems to be accomplishing that. But uh, that it would destroy America economically, uh, that we would be totally psychologically and economically cowed and and demoralized by such attacks. And I think that we have shown through our response that that is not going to happen. It's not the case. Now, people argue about whether or not the billions and billions, hundreds and billions, um, one estimate has it as a trillion extra that we've spent since 9-11 on Homeland Security, whether or not that's worth it in terms of cost and sense. But watching people respond yesterday, it wasn't just the individual citizens whose courage was so laudable and just so inspirational. It was the fact that everyone out there seemed to know what they were doing, that the first responders who were kind of flummoxing around uh, 20 years ago with the first World Trade Center here in New York, you know, who didn't know what to do, didn't know who was in charge, didn't know what a protocol was, that these people all knew what to do and did their jobs. And because of that, lives were saved. A lot of American lives were saved. I mean, I believe that we are not going to be able to prevent attacks like this. Um, now, I know it. I don't want to use the term um, low-level attacks, but the fact of the matter is, um, it, it is this is not on the scale of 9-11. It's just not. It's a terrible event, and, and our hearts go out to those, to the victims, their families, and to everybody who, who, who helped ameliorate a really ghastly scene on the ground. But we are not going to totally prevent such attacks. Everything depends on how we respond to them as individuals, as a community, as states, and as a nation. That's what's going to ultimately discourage terrorists. Um, so because I, I think it's if you unless you want to throw away your freedom and say, you know, we're not going to have Boston marathons because they're dangerous. We're not going to allow people to gather and have political conventions because we can't guarantee security. Right. I agree. You know, we we must carry on as a people and Americans, um, I think, in the beginning, uh, you know, especially when this was totally new to us, we had a hard time adjusting to a new post-9-11 world. But I really uh, do think that you have to look a lot at the response, what went well, what didn't go well. Today, perhaps because the news was so grim yesterday, I've chosen to highlight uh, in a piece I'm writing for uh, City Journal's website, um, I've chosen to highlight what happened out there yesterday that would have never happened 10 years ago. Right. And, and I think that understanding the dynamics of response and terror is really important. 
just because as I think you and I agree we're not going to no. we're not going to to um uh, to tell the guy the fanatic um who you know thinks that we're all infidels <laughs> that um you know that we don't deserve to burn in hell and die in such raids you're not going to persuade him no no absolutely not but uh, just very quickly because I'm running out of time and you've been very generous with yours um when you say how the nation responds mm -hmm. uh do you mean uh, if 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 this mm -hmm. turned out to be a a, uh, a a an attack that was uh facilitated by a foreign government in some way shape or form would you encourage uh, some kind of uh, military response to make it known that if you do something like this, even on a quote-unquote smaller scale, you're going to suffer consequences? Well, I don't think we can begin to ask that question yet until I, I don't like to speculate. No, no, no. I, yeah. I, I'm not going to engage in hypotheticals. No, I'm, I... I'm going to ask who did this, how did they do it, who helped them, and what can we do to respond in such an effective and efficient way that it doesn't happen again. Okay, fair enough. All right. Well, that, 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 that's, uh, that's uh, journalistic speak, but I thank you very much. We look forward to the piece at City Journal, and thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, Judy bye. Miller, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Steve Molesberg Show. Um, I think that, uh, you know, if we if we're far away from this, but if, if, I mean, it seems like a no-brainer to me, but under this president, I mean, if a foreign government had a fingerprint in this somehow, <laughs> it's unlikely, but if, that's how you deter. You blast hard and fast and furious, pardon the pun, no pun intended, and you you deter future government facilitation of such events. Not saying that's the case here, not saying that at all. Want to make that perfectly clear. We're coming back uh, with a uh, Boston reporter who was on the scene yesterday on the Steve Malsberg Show.